Lisa Lucci Show. We're in my living room on the Upper East Side, episode 58. How are you? You good? Fact of the day. Women's hearts typically beat faster than men's hearts. That answers a lot. That answers a lot for me. I don't know about you. But to make up for having smaller hearts, a woman's heart rate is generally faster than a man's. Men's average about 50, 70 beats per minute, while the women's heart, well, a woman's heart beats around 78 beats per minute. You know what this means? This means that the female heart works harder over the course of her life. You know? And then they wonder why we're so damn emotional. Okay? We got this smaller heart beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, back and forth, back and forth, uh, uh, faster than yours. And then they wonder why sometimes we're high, strung, emotional, chaotic, frantic, you know, the whole thing. Well, that's probably why. <laughs> no, that's definitely not why. That definitely has to do with your mental genetic makeup and emotional makeup, but whatever. So, you know where I went the other day? Veselka. Do you know Veselka? Veselka is a Ukrainian diner on uh, 2nd Avenue and East 7th Street, and it's been open for 66 years, and it is so delicious. I love Veselka. Veselka is one of these places in New York. It's a fixture in New York. If you're in New York, you know what I love? You know what I love? I love when people come to the city and they ask me, hey, Elise, where should I go for dinner, whatever? And then they tell me, sometimes they tell me their list of restaurants. Oh, Jean Georges, this and this, that. And these places, they're so expensive. They charge you like $200 for an entree. And, and, and you get one scallop, one scallop the size of a jelly bean and a swizzle of a brown sauce. I mean, does that make you full? No, absolutely not. So usually my recommendations are all these hidden or not so hidden, famous-ish with New Yorkers, haunts. And one of these places is Veselka. I love Veselka. So it's this diner. It's on the corner of 7th, 7th, East 7th and uh, 2nd Avenue. And they have the best Ukrainian food. You know, it's a diner. It's like, you know, if you go to the diner somewhere, you might get like Spanakopita because the diner is owned by Greek people and you know the Greek food is going to be good because it would just be sacrilege if they didn't have a decent spinach pie. That's like this place. They make, like, everything they make is just delicious. So the other day, I I actually had... Um, potato pancakes. That's just what I was in the mood for. But they have so many things. They have borscht. Uh, I also had pierogies. I shared pierogies. We shared pierogies. They're known for their pierogies. So the pierogies they make are delicious. They, you could get them boiled or fried. And, and they have um, special fillings in them, you know. So they had like arugula and goat cheese, mushroom and caramelized onion. They have a meat one, a potato one. They have beets and cheese. I mean, literally delicious. And every time you go, there's different pierogies on the menu. And so it's so fun. And you can get them in uh, an order of four or an order of eight. And so um, there we are. We're at Baselka. I dragged my boyfriend downtown. He's like, I don't want to go here. I'm like, what do you mean you don't want to go here? It's the best diner in New York. And by the way, a lot of comics do hang out there. And it always it was a big popular comic hanging out a thousand years ago. I think comics maybe still hang out there. I don't know. I don't even give a shit if comics hang or don't hang. I don't care where they hang out. All I'm going there is for the food. So I drag him down there. And he's like, you dragging me all the way downtown to go to a diner? I'm like, are you kidding? This is this is the highlight of my week. This is the highlight of my week. Of course I'm going to drag you down here to go to the diner. Oh, it was so good. And you know what I love about this place is that the people that work in it, they're all Ukrainian from the neighborhood. You know, and, and they are older people. And it just feels like a mom and pop place. You know, and... and they don't really necessarily always give you what you order. You know, that kind of whole thing. But it's delish. You know where else I went that was delish? Now, I'm pro- definitely going to butcher the name. Um, it's Jean's Famous Foods. And I know that I'm saying that wrong, but you spell it. How you spell that is X-I-A-N. And again, I know. I really I really need to... Uh, I really need to say this the right way, but it, like it would be pronounced Zion Famous Foods, but like if you just looked at it, but phonetically, but that's n- not how you say it. I think it's John's Famous Foods. Anyway, it's authentic Chinese hand pulled noodles. It's a takeout place. I also went there. I went to the one on East 78th Street, but they have locations all over the place. Oh my God, is this delicious? The only thing they have on the menu at this place, so it's this Chinese, so it's a Chinese takeout. 
they have tables outside, you know, pandemic style tables. Like you just sit down in the middle of the, you know, the bus lane in Manhattan and you eat. I went with my friend Nick and all, all it is is you get these noodle dishes and then they have like some little side dishes that you can order. So we ordered uh, spinach and cabbage dumplings, which were divine, literally divine. If you go there, you have to get these spinach and cabbage dumplings. They don't sound good. They just were delicious. And then uh, they had these noodle bowls, these hand-pulled noodle bowls. You can get like a thin noodle or a thicker noodle. I got a thicker noodle. They ki- It kind of looks like pad CU, you know, Thai, the thick Thai noodles. And the noodles, bowls, they come with uh, oxtail or pork or lamb. I'm not really into either of, although any of those options. So I got the vegetarian option. And uh, you can get it on a scale of spiciness, like one through five. And I got the, um, the, the, the second to last spiciness, like the mi- mild, a little spicier than mild, mild. I got like mild, not mild, mild, mild. My friend got the third rung of spiciness, like medium mild. And you know what? His mouth is on fire. It's very spicy. But if you like spicy noodle dishes, sort of plain, uh, meaning plain as in like not vegetables in them, not meats in them, but tons of flavor, gotta try, gotta try. Thumbs up for sure. And so cheap. I think for uh, for the both of us with our bo- two noodle bowls and the, 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 the dumplings, I don't know, $25.00 delicious. And by the way, such a cute date, right? Like such a cute date. If you're going out with somebody and you don't want to go somewhere expensive and you don't want to go somewhere super fancy, take them to a place like this. I mean, like they have, it's the food is the bomb. The food's delicious. And it's like a whole cool experience. Of course, you got to be with somebody that's cool. That's like not expecting you to take them to somewhere with a white tablecloth. Because basically when you're sitting in the tables that they have outside, it's you might as well be sitting in the two boy the two by four section of Home Depot. I mean that's how shabby it is, but yeah, but you can't beat the food. Anyway. You know, I was doing that intermittent fasting, speaking of food, and uh I'm just, you know, I got the whole goddamn thing wrong. I just got the whole thing wrong. You know, and I probably said this, but it was like, you know, you don't you fast for sixteen hours, then you eat for eight. And I thought that, like, if I eat for the eight, I could eat whatever the hell I want. And, you know, now I'm five pounds heavier because I thought the eating in the eight-hour window meant, like, I can have a party. And, of course, that's not the case. My ex-husband told me that I need to do 20 hours of fasting and only four hours of eating. So then I, you know, and so I tried that also. And then in those four hours, I just ate, like, a sloth. I mean, I had, like, you know, maybe, like, I had slow eating over a four hour period and I ate everything. Like I had like three pieces of a six foot hero, half of an Entenmann's crumb cake, you know, lots of coffee with the French vanilla sugar-free coffee mate. Like, cause that's disgusting, you know, I mean, delicious, but you know, not healthy. Some rainbow cookies. I mean, I was a train wreck. A couple St. Joseph pastries because, you know, that was a thing. Yeah. So here I am. Not fitting in my clothes once again. Oy, oy, oy. I got to get this under control. DMX died. Sad, right? 50 years old. Poor thing. He had a big alcohol problem. I think that that's, I think he died. He, I, I, I know he had a, I think he had a heart attack, right? Did he have a heart attack? And um, because he, he overdosed or he, he drank too much or something. But 50 years old, my God. Uh, you know, we get to this certain point where we're like, oh, 50 sounds old. It sounds old, whatever. You know, now to me, 50 sounds young. And I don't know. I mean, other people have passed away in recent times, of course, and with COVID and everything. But for whatever reason, and I don't know why, for whatever reason, when I heard this, I, uh, I, I, I really like, I had like a heart pang. I immediately felt sad. I just thought, oh my God, 50, five zero, so young. I remember, it feels like just yesterday I was 25 and thinking, 50, so old. I mean, <clears throat> I guess he lived a good life in the sense of, in the sense of on paper maybe, right? Like he had this big career and he probably had a couple of bucks and he had 15 kids, 15 kids. And he was married a few times, um, but, or engaged or whatnot, but uh, 50, just a life cut so short. I mean, he could have at least had another 49 years a la Prince Philip, right? Another one. 
99 years old. Well, he lived, he, he lived a long life. We can only wish for that, I guess, right? Oh, I have fabulous news. I'm so excited. <clears throat> I'm recording this on Monday, April 12th. Yes, it was my mother's birthday. Happy birthday, Mom. Of course, she celebrated by going to the Borgata in Atlantic City. She won, and of course, she wore her casino shoes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I am going tomorrow to Las Vegas, also to a casino. I'm going to the Strat Hotel. My friend Brett Ernst, he's a funny, funny Italian comic from New Jersey. He's also an actor in uh, Cobra Kai. He plays Louis LaRusso in Cobra Kai, which I think is a spinoff of The Karate Kid. But he uh, he has a residency at the Strat Hotel Inside the Strat Hotel is the L.A. Comedy Club. So he's there for the, I think he's there, um, he was there in March, and, and he's there throughout April. And so I'm going there. Tomorrow, I fly out super early, 7 a.m., and I'm just there Tuesday night and Wednesday night. I'm back home on Thursday, and I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to do some time on his show, and, you know, playing Las Vegas is just going to be so exciting. I I have not been out to Las Vegas doing stand-up. If you are in Nevada, in the Las Vegas area, and you want to come, come to our shows, hang out with us after, whatever. He's so, so funny. Um, and he's a talented guy, and he's been also, uh, he's been doing stand-up for a long time. And uh, I think it's going to be great. And I'm sure he has friends out there, so it'll be good networking. And, um, and yeah, just good. And I'm going to do some TikTok vids from the strip. <clears throat> He actually hooked me up with a hotel. Um, I can't remember which one I'm staying at. Uh, but it's a, it's a nice hotel, and I'm, I am on the strip, so that'll be fun. That will be fun. Viva Las Vegas, baby. I had it. My kids, they, you know, they were like, Mommy, but why are you going away? I, you know, I told them I'm only going for two nights, just two nights, and they're staying with their father. And I'm just, again, I'm always so lucky, and I have to always say this, that the small chance that he's listening, that I appreciate him always for uh, supporting this because it's not easy. It's not easy. First of all, so many divorces are contentious and it takes a really special person to be able to uh, be married to somebody, have children with them. You get divorced and that's never, you know, as we had a very amicable, amicable divorce, as you know, but you know, you get, you are divorced and you are both living, you're trying to live your own separate lives and to be supportive of your former spouse's dream career is really special. And he is, he is. He said to me, I called him up last week and I said, I said, hi. I said, I have a small favor to ask you. And he's like, what do you want, Elise? <laughs> it wasn't, he actually didn't say it like that. He said, what do you want, Elise? <laughs> and I said, so I might have an opportunity to go to Vegas. And he's like, no. And I, I'll have two nights, please, two, two measly nights. I said, I like, I go, I'm not even there for 48 hours. Come on. And he said to me, all right, Elise, he said, I swear to God, you bet, you better, you better be making, you better be making it in this business. Okay. Because I'm doing lots of babysitting around here. And I said, I am, I am just trust me. I just need time. I said, COVID didn't do us any favors, but I just need time. Don't worry. I'm a hard worker and he knows I am. And he knows I wouldn't be doing anything. <clears throat> I, you know, he would, well, I shouldn't say. He knows, I've always had a lot of hobbies. I've always had a lot of interests. But he knows I'm not going to be doing something like stand up, going out at night, not being with my children if I wasn't dead serious. If I wasn't dead serious. I think there's a market. I'm sorry. I think that there's a market for a young female Italian comic out right now, in my opinion. And my fellow comedians' opinions. I do. I mean, sure, we have Sebastian, and he's wonderful, but Sebastian's in his 50s, and he's a guy. Do you see any young, younger people doing stand No, and also, you know, the British kid thing is, the British, uh, the British kids thing is a whole, is a whole angle there. So, um, are you in a relationship? Did you have any, uh, pandemic relationships? You know, we've spoken about pandemic relationships, but so many people I know are coming out of their pandemic relationships now. Oh my God, I can't even believe it. Like they, they, you know, they, they shacked up with somebody in the beginning of this whole thing. You know, I think in the beginning they were like trying to sniff around, see what the deal is. And then, and then a lot of people wound up meeting somebody. They wound up meeting somebody or sticking with somebody or getting back together with somebody. And, uh, 
And, you know, and they stuck it out during the lockdown, during, you know, quarantine, and now people are getting vaccinated and things are opening back up and people are out. And I got to tell you, at least in Manhattan, it's a good sign. A lot of things are closed, of course, and it and it is very weird being out amongst all of these closed things. Like the other day, I tried to order takeout and I go on my Seamless app and I placed an order. It didn't come for three hours. Three hours later, I found myself eating a whole bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. And I'm like, what the hell? Where's the food? I ordered food. Oh, that's right. I did order food. And I tried to call the restaurant and there was no one answering. And I remember, oh, you know what? Because they closed the, f- the F down. <laughs> so it's it's a, it's, a, it's a weird time. But the city does feel like it's coming back. When I went down to Veselka the other night with my boyfriend, um, I made him take the subway. He hates taking the subway. But too bad about you. We love the subway. I love the subway. So we have to be on the subway. We This is how this, what are we doing? We're taking cabs. That's ridiculous. He's like, I'll drive. I'm like, you're not going to drive. It's crazy. But anyway, we took the subway. And lots of people out. Everybody's in good spirits. But, um, but, you know, but, in, but, 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 have, have heat, height, apogee of the pandemic, you know, the pandemic forced a lot of daters to get serious way more quickly than they maybe have normally. They became exclusive after a couple of dates. It was like your third date with somebody. Normally you'd be doing third date and thinking, do you want a fourth on third date? You already moved in. You're picking out bedspreads together. But, you know, it's, uh, that, that, that's what it was. And it's funny because, you know, they, p- people just shacked up. I guess they didn't want to be alone or maybe they wanted, maybe they wanted to share the bills. I mean, that's another thing, you know. I mean, I thought it, a lot of it had to do with, with uh, being alone. But I had some friends say, you know, Elise, it really had a lot less to do with being alone and being uncomfortable with being alone. And in my house, it had more to do with the fact that my work got, you know, my work slowed down. You know, if they were comics, they weren't doing as much work or actors. Um, or if they were in sales, they weren't doing as much sales. And it had it had more to do with, you know, sharing the expenses. So fine. So basically, these people, they became exclusive after a few dates. They moved in together after, you know, what, a month or two. And now we're, they're 10, 11 months in. And at least some of my friends, they're looking at their, uh, their quarantined partner, the quarantined significant other, and they're re-examining their union. <laughs> they're like, did I want this? Do I still want this? How did I get myself into this? And maybe more importantly, how do I get myself out of this? Is it me or do you hear this crazy noise? Let me go shut the window. You know, most people record a podcast with headphones in, you know, dead silence. Me, I got them in my apartment. I got got the windows open. You hear jackhammers on the street. I don't know who's jacking on the street. I live in Manhattan. And this cement and, I don't know, all over the place. Nobody's jackhammering. I was just outside. And anyway, it sounds like more of a suburban noise to me. Anywho. Um, okay. So, so my friends, trying to get themselves out of this tangled web that they woven during the pandemic with a, with a guy or a girl. But now... Now they have this COVID accelerated timeline. Maybe they can't afford to move out. They can't afford to get the guy out. But a lot of my friends are saying the same thing that, you know, when <clears throat> now things are starting to open up, now work is starting to pick back up. And now they're realizing that their timelines with the other person or their life goals, they're not aligned. That's hard. Are we breaking up? Are we breaking free? What are we doing? One of my friends, <clears throat> they live together. She moved in with this guy. They're living together. They share all the costs. Right now, they can't afford to not live together. And, you know, when I say they share the costs, they're sharing, obviously, the rent and, and the bills and the groceries or whatever. But she feels like it's time for the relationship to be done. She said she just needs it to be done. She said she feels like she fo- was forced into it. Not he didn't force her. She didn't force herself. Like, they, like the, the circumstance forced themselves into this. And she just doesn't see it as a long-term thing. And she said there's nothing wrong with a relationship day-to-day. She said day-to-day the relationship is fine. They watch TV. They hang out. They go for walks, whatever. She said it's not like they fight or anything. They make dinner at night. She said, but she wants to have children in the next year or two. She wants to get married or, or some sort of form of some formalized marriage, like maybe a civil ceremony. She doesn't need a big thing. But she wants to have kids in the next year or two. And he does not want to. So 
what did they do? So she says, you know, what, the second work starts picking up and they can afford, they're just going to go their separate ways. Fine. So they, they, they mutually agree on this. But what if you don't mutually agree? I mean, that sucks. It made me think about, though, when I, when I was talking to her about this, <clears throat> um, or when, when we had other times in history, did, did people pair up quickly? Or did they get married? Because I also know people, by the way, that got married, you know, during this time. Just had a little ceremony. And I thought about in the Depression, did that happen? You know, because we hear of, like, all these the people, you know, during the Depression, I guess people had babies and, you know, whatever. But, but then when I started to research it, in economic downturns, people don't, people don't get together. You know, basically, the, there's a rule of thumb that when the economy plummets, ma- marriage rates nosedive as well. So I don't know. Is this is this similar to the Depression? I don't know. I was trying to do some research on the Depression, just read about it. Um, and I couldn't find, I, I couldn't find so much stuff, but, you know, I do, I did read that, you know, in, in, er, in the early 1930s, you know, the depths of the Great Depression and there was a decline in marriage license applications. But I thought, I thought that people got together during the Depression. I thought they got together. I thought they got together. They, they, they huddled together. I thought that they also had, there was a lot of babies born in that time. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I really don't know. Um, I read, you know, I, I always talk about it. I read the New York Times all the time. And I, it made me also think about when was the first New York Times wedding announcement? You know, like, how did we even start writing about these wedding announcements? How, how did we start? Because they're so ridiculous. I don't know if you read them, but like, it's always, it's, the, it's you know, society, who's who, ridiculous. The first wedding announcement, I found it. I want to read it to you. The first wedding announcement is, uh, it's so it it's so it's so small and pixelated, but it's it, it's very it's 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 almost unreadable. But it, it says in Trinity Cho- Church, Fredonia, on the thirteenth, by Reverend T. Tyler John M. Grant of Jamestown, to Sarah, daughter of Honorary James Mullet of Fredonia. That was that was it. That was the first wedding announcement on the New York Times. The wedding announcements now on the New York Times is like, you know, I don't even know. Preston the Fourth met Zoe of the Lower East Side in Bali on vacation, and they come together in a lavish ceremony at the island of Capri. And it's a so, you know, and both are graduates of Harvard Law. Summa cum laude. I mean, it's such a who's who of everything. But uh but the first one, it was so, you know, so basic, right? And I and uh, and basically, it said that the the bride's father in this first one, they they, they were a prominent family. They, these were prominent families, and they actually were um, the bridegroom. I should say was the cousin of Ulysses S. Grant, right? Who obviously, and he was an army lieutenant. He went on to be ge- a general and a president. So that was big, big prominent family there, and the bride's father. Um, was also a, a prominent family, and uh, he became a self-taught lawyer. And he had his family; they they grew up in Fredonia, New York, and they had thirteen kids, and they lived on a far- a farm. And this guy, the bride's father, he eventually became a state supreme court justice. So um, it was still, I guess, a prominent who's who on the New York Times wedding announcements. But it was interesting to me. It was like when. When was that first wedding announcement? I think, and I do think the first one, it was in 1851. Yep, September 18th. Here it is, September 18th, 1851. And by the way, and by the way, can I say something? The New York Times in September of 1851, it wasn't what we know today. It was uh, the New York Daily Times. The New York Daily Times. It was not the New York Times. It was the New York Daily Times. Yeah, so that's the deal. That was that was that first wedding announcement. So funny how far they've come. Still, though, society pages, nonetheless. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about all these people breaking up because of the the pandemic. Over. Are we going to look back on this in five years and say, "What the hell was I doing, living with that monster, Lance?" He was such a slob, and I did all his laundry, and I barely knew him, and I had FaceTime calls with his family, and I never even met these people. (laughs) 
Luckily, I don't have that same experience because my boyfriend was totally bizarre at the start of the pandemic. I mean, we were together, but he was like, I don't think we're going to see each other as much, Elise. I think, if anything, we'll see each other less. And I was like, wait, okay, Scarface, why? And he was just like, oh, because it's so dangerous out there. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway. Well, we're still together, and 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 everything is fine. So maybe maybe that's right. Maybe the maybe maybe all of this rushing into the relationships due to the situation out in the world really wasn't obviously the healthy thing to do. And you probably just should have done things normal, slow pace if you wanted it to be worth anything. I don't know. Curious to know your opinion. Product of the week. Satin pillowcases. You know about these? Of course you do. Of course you do. When I was in Florida, my grandmother insisted on sleep on satin. My grandmother's always slept on satin pillowcases, but she's insisted on sleeping. Uh, she insisted on sleeping with a satin pillowcase in Florida. So my mother had to run around and find one for her. And um, I think she found it in TJ Maxx or something. But I, uh, she bought a few. So I was sleeping on a satin pillowcase. And I just was reminded, because I did when I was younger, I was reminded of, ooh, how nice my it made my hair. And by the way, did you know that if you sleep on a satin pillowcase, it actually um, helps your skin? Because, you know, it, you know, your skin will tend to, like, bunch up or crinkle up when you're sleeping on cotton. You know, sometimes you wake up and you have those lines on your face. Your skin doesn't do that, not nearly as much when you're sleeping on satin smooth pillow. Um, so I found some on Amazon and I ordered them and I washed them to see how they were post-wash. And they're fabulous on Amazon. This is the, this is the brand. EXQ. EXQ. Home Satin Pillowcase for Hair and Skin. Two for $8.99. I bought the light pink color because I'm just a 1950s girl at heart. And I bought them and they were great. They're totally great. My only gripe... My only gripe <clears throat> is that they are satin, a.k.a. polyester, a.k.a. not breathable fabric. But <clears throat> my hair has been great. My skin's fine. Um, and I'm liking it. There was a big whole thing. You know, there's like the silk. I think there's silk. Uh, someone came out with a silk pillowcase um, maybe a year ago called Slip. And they sell it in Saks and Bergdorf's and all those stores. So, you know, this is, I guess, the uh, poor man's version. <clears throat> but... Satin pillowcase. I like it. If you want to try it, EXQ, two for eight ninety nine on Amazon. You can't go wrong with that. Eight ninety nine is cheaper than a McDonald's extra value meal. Quote of the day, Audrey Hepburn: "The best thing to hold on to in life is each other." Isn't that nice? That's it for today's Elise Delucci show. Next week, I will have lots of exciting things to tell you, like how Vegas was and how Brett Ernst is and, I don't know, the strip and, I don't know, maybe anything that'll come from that and more stories. And I hope you have a great week. And remember, if you want to drop me a review on Apple Podcasts, I totally appreciate it. I read all of the reviews. They do help me a lot in terms of uh, promoting the podcast and just in general, um, you know, make it, getting people aware of uh, me and my, my, my stand-up. So if you do listen and you don't mind dropping a review, I would totally appreciate it. Anyway, as always, you can find me on TikTok at Elise DeLucci or on Instagram at Elise DeLucci. And in the meantime, I hope you have a fabulous week, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Take care. Take care.